Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 28 of the chapter Equilibrium. The topic of this video is the ionization constant and the ionic product of water. We have studied about the equilibrium constant. The ionization constant is just a form of equilibrium constant. And let us begin with talking of water that in the previous couple of videos I explained to you that water when it acts with when it reacts with an acid it behaves as a base and when it reacts with a base it acts as an acid. Two of these examples that we have done are that when water reacts with HCl the HCl dissociates it acts as the proton donor therefore HCl acts as the acid and in this reaction water accepts that proton and therefore water is accepting um, is acting as a base results in the formation of H3O positive and Cl negative. So in this reaction, water acted as a base. Ammonia is a base and it reacts with water. And in this reaction, ammonia acts as the proton acceptor. And water in comparison to ammonia is a stronger acid. Therefore here, water acts as the proton donor. So water donates a proton, the ammonia turns into ammonium ion and the OH negative ion. So what do we notice here that in these two reactions water acted as an acid in one reaction and as a base in the other reaction. If water can act as an acid and a base in different conditions, then let us assume a reaction where water is reacting with water. And let us assume that when it reacts with water, that is water reacting with water, one of the molecules is acting as an acid and the other one is acting as a base or if we took a sample of water it would act as a weak acid base solution and some of the water molecules would be ionized <coughs> and some of them would be acting as acids and some of them would be acting as bases so if such a reaction took place we would have water that's a liquid which acts as an acid and a water molecule which is a base of course a liquid and when it reacts one of them acts, the one that is acting as an acid, donates a proton and therefore becomes OH negative. This is the conjugate base. And the one that acted as a base accepts that proton and results in the formation of H3O positive, which is the conjugate acid. Now, an equilibrium will establish between these because when you, when you have the same molecule, the difference between the acidic and basic characters would be very less. So none of them is a strong acid or a strong base. Both of them are very weak acid and base mixture. So an equilibrium will be established. And since the equilibrium is established, we can calculate the equilibrium constant. In this case, the water molecules are dissociating. Therefore, we call the equilibrium constant the dissociation constant. So the dissociation constant is nothing but K, that is the equilibrium constant. How do you calculate the equilibrium constant? You write down the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants, all raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients. So you have H3O positive into OH negative, the concentration divided by H2O, which is in the reactant side, and I write it only once. Why? Because it's a liquid. And when you have a liquid, if you remember when we did equilibrium constant, anything that is in the liquid state has a very high concentration. And therefore, it is a pure liquid. It is 100% liquid or almost 100% liquid. Therefore, its, its concentration actually makes no sense. It is complete. It is whole. So it would be one in a way. <coughs> so we ignore the denominator, which is a liquid. And therefore, the dissociation constant becomes equal to just the hydronium ion concentration and the hydroxyl ion concentration, the product of the hydronium ion and the hydroxyl ion concentrations. So these are the two ions which are formed as a result of the dissociation of water molecules. And so we are getting the product of only the ions and that is the reason why this is called the ionic product of water. So what is ionic product of water? Ionic product of water is nothing but the dissociation constant or the ionization constant of water. Okay? The denominator, which is a liquid, has been ignored and therefore you have only the, the terms that you have here are only the concentrations of the two ions, that is the hydronium ion and the hydroxyl ion concentrations. 
and this is usually represented by KW, where W represents water, the dissociation constant or the ionization constant or the ionic product of water. So KW is also called the ionic product of water. Now, under standard conditions, the temperature is 298 Kelvin. The concentration of H positive ions in such a solution has been calculated and it has been found to be equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 moles per liter or molar solution. That is 10 to the power minus 7, which means that the concentration of hydrogen ions is very, call it <coughs> hydrogen ion or hydronium ion. I told you in the previous video that we'll be using it interchangeably. So the hydrogen ion concentration is 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 molars uh, solution or moles per liter which is a very very small percentage and we have seen that in this dissociation constant the concentration of hydrogen ions and the hydroxyl ions is equal in other words at equilibrium what would be the ionic product of water the ionic product is the product of hydrogen ion concentration and the OH negative ion concentration and both of them are 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 because H positive is equal to OH negative. The concentration of H positive, if this is 1 mole, this is also 1 mole. Since their concentrations are equal, therefore it means that 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 molar concentration is the concentration of both hydrogen ions and the hydroxyl ions or the hydronium ion and the hydroxyl ion. So the ionic product of water would be equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 square molar solution which is 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 molar solution. So what is the ionic product of water at 290 under standard conditions? It is 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 moles per liter. We know, why did I say the under standard conditions? Because the ionic product or the value of equilibrium constant is temperature dependent. It depends on the temperature. The value of K would be different at different temperatures for the same reaction. So at 298 Kelvin, the ionic product of water is 1 into 10 to the power minus 14 moles per liter. But at another temperature, it would be different. It would be a different value. We know that under these conditions, when you have pure water, the density of water is 1000 grams per liter, which means that if you take one liter of water, it should weigh 1000 grams or 1 kg. And we also know that the molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. If you took one mole of water, the mass of one mole of water would be 18 grams. So from if you know the density and the molar mass, of a substance, you can calculate the molarity of pure water. How can you calculate it? You know the density is moles per liter. And what is molarity? Molarity is number, uh, sorry, density is grams per liter. And what is molarity? Molarity is moles per liter. So if you can find out, if this is the number of grams per liter, if you could find out how many moles is it, in order to find out how many moles is it, what do you do? You write the mass, the total mass divided by the molar mass will give you number of moles. So we know in one liter there are 1000 grams. So in one liter, how many moles would be there? Divided by 18 grams per mole. So the grams and grams will get cancelled. Mole will come here, liter will come down and therefore you will get moles per liter, which is nothing but molarity. And if you calculate this, 1000 by 18 comes out to be 55.55 moles per liter is the molarity of pure water. If we were to find out the ratio between the dissociated water to undissociated water, the number of molecules which are dissociated, both whether you take H positive ions or OH negative ions, they have, if one molecule of water breaks down, it will give you equal number of H positive and OH negative. So if, if you want to calculate the number of molecules that dissociated, it would be only one of these because both of these together make one molecule of water. So if we take, want to find out the ratio of dissociated water, how many molecules of water got dissociated? You need the concentration of either one of these, either H positive or OH negative. And we know that the concentrations of H positive and OH negative are equal. And what is it? 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 moles per liter. And you divide it by the number of the molarity of 
undissociated water molecules which is 55.55 because for a pure uh, liquid and this is almost pure you know because the amount of um, more the number of molecules which have dissociated would be very very less and we'll come to know from this calculation itself so 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 molar is the molarity of the dissociated water and undissociated is 55.55 moles per liter so when you find out this ratio it comes out to be now the molarity on both sides it gets cancelled out therefore it has no units this ratio you know ratios of substances which have the same units do not have units so it has no units but the value that comes out to be is equal to 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 9 which is almost equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 9 which is a very very small number it is an extremely small number so what does this tell us that the dissociated when you have a very small number it means the denominator is much much larger and the numerator is much smaller it means the dissociated water molecules are very less in comparison to the undissociated water molecules so both when you have water and water acting with each other they both act as extremely weak acid and base uh, solution now why is this calculation important why do we talk of this ionization constant ionic product why is this value of 10 to the power minus 14 molar important the ionic product of water this we'll understand in the next topic where we'll be doing the ph and before we would be going into the next topic let me just tell you that what let us just understand in a reaction mixture if the concentration of h positive is more than oh negative H positive is responsible for acidic character and OH negative is responsible for basic character. So if the concentration of H positive is more than OH negative, it means the solution is acidic in nature. If it is the other way around, that is OH negative concentration is more than the H positive concentration, then it means that the solution is basic in nature because OH negative is responsible for the basic character of a solution. And if both of them are equal, then it means that the solution is neutral. That the, when the concentration, the ions which are responsible for acidic character are equal to the ions which are responsible for basic character. If both of them are equal, obviously, on the whole, the solution is going to be neutral. So this is what we understand from the ionic product of water or the ionization constant, which is also called the dissociation constant of water. So with that, I finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning in the new year for more videos in chemistry. Wish you the very best. Have a wonderful 2019. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.